climate. Just, this is a lovely place to be. It is. I wonder what it's like in other places around the world right now. What you mean, like like Africa or Indonesia? Exactly. Mm. We could look at a climate graph. Well, we did look at climate graphs last week, so we kind of have a feel for like what they what they mean and how they work. So, could we use that and like like see what it's like in different places? I reckon we could. Like I've got some, an idea. Using some kind of technology. I think so. Have you heard of a green screen? I I have heard of a green screen. Let's go do an adventure. Oh my god. So today we're going to go through a bunch of different biomes and we're going to look at the climate graph. If you don't know how to read a climate graph, we did a video last week. So you should just click pause, go watch that and come back. Episode 11, it's a good one. Absolutely. So what we're going to start with here today is this climate graph for a desert. Quick little recap, down the bottom we've got a bar graph. That's going to show you precipitation. And along the top we've got a line graph, that's showing you temperature. So what can we see about temperature in a desert? Well, we're in a very hot desert at the moment. We're in the Sahara, pretty much the hottest desert there is. So. As you can see with our temperature line graph, it goes right up here to 42 degrees average maximum daily temperature in May. Very, very warm. It's got a little bit of a, uh, a temperature range here, but even the coldest months only get down to 30 degrees average daily maximum temperature. Very, very hot. Very summer. hot. What, do we, what can we see about rainfall? The interesting thing about rainfall, and rainfall is the most important part of a climate graph for a desert, because we can have cold uh, deserts, and we'll look at this in a little bit, but the one thing that a climate graph mass, must have sorry, for a desert is really, really low precipitation all here. You're not going to have a big spike. So as we can see here in the Sahara, at no point does the rainfall go above 7 millimetres for any month. It's very low. And here in June and July, we get no rain at all. So it doesn't matter if it is cold or hot particularly, but you must have very, very low temperature. Do you want to go Low see precipitation, what... you mean? Low precipitation. Ah, every time. See? Um, do you want to go see what this looks like? What do you mean? Can we just like go appear in a desert or something? Yeah, I reckon if you click your fingers. Ready? It's like magic. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Wow! So hot right now. So hot. I'm so, so glad I put my sunglasses on. Look, we got, we're got we in the desert. Is this the Sahara? We're in the Sahara. When you go to the Sahara, you have to take your bunny hat. That is like, the rule. I like I put some sunscreen on before. And what do we notice? The temperature is very, so very hot. hot. And so there hot is right no precipitation in sight. Oh, yeah, I'm sweating. Whew. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, no, I think we'll be right. As long as Maybe we we'll find an away. oasis. We'll, we'll put like some arrows in the sand where the... Which the way we've gone so people get lost in the desert all that. the time. Stay with your vehicle, don't leave. So what kind of animals are we going to see? Uh, we're, camel! We're going to see camel. Cam, it's camel over there. Yeah. Here. There's a cactus, but there's not a lot of trees yeah, there's because there's not a lot of precipitation. In fact, not a lot of precipitation means there's not much life of any kind. Some cactuses, some grasses, and one, one or two animals. Little, Borrowing animals, but Susie and I. So, uh, yeah, exactly. But there's not a lot, but it's good because man, it's so hot. I think we should. I think we should go back to the classroom. Let's go back to some aircon. All right, okay. all right, all right. Let's go. Oh, we're back. Oh man, I'm so like I'm so sweaty. It's like sand. yeah, I know. I've said everywhere. So it's coarse. It just gets everywhere. Coarse and it gets everywhere. All right, we are back. The desert was a lot of fun. Don't know that I'd want to stay there too long. It's way too hot. Way too hot. And not okay. enough precipitation. <laughs> We're going to look at another climate graph now that also has low rainfall, a little bit more than desert, but not too much more. What can you show me about this rainfall and where are we? Uh, well, rainfall, we are actually in the tundra. So we're like mm. northern Canada. There's not many trees around, a lot of permafrost, pretty cold. So what can we see about precipitation is it's not too dissimilar from what we just saw in a desert. We have like 10 millimetres. You can't probably see this, but 10 millimeters is there. So pretty much every month besides these two, where it gets up to like 20 millimeters, very little precipitation, almost none. And almost all precipitation that falls would fall as snow. Uh, so very cold most of the year. Well, you tell me what the temperature line does. So the temperature line up the top, as we can see here, we're gonna look at this side here, temperature. And not a huge range, but we're starting at about minus 25 degrees. So we're going to make sure we have a jacket on this next trip. It's going to definitely need a jacket. And we're only, a scarf as well. We're only getting up to about 2 degrees Celsius. So there's only one month in July where it gets above 0 degrees, which is why our soil is permanently frozen. Permafrost. That's called permafrost. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go have a look at this tundra? Yeah, well, and you can see here, because we're going up in the middle of the year too, this is obviously going to be the Northern Hemisphere. So this is going to be a long trip. Yeah. All right, let's, let's go. go. Let's go look at the tundra. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, it's oh. so so cold oh, down so, here. I'm so cold right now. Look, we're standing on the permafrost. Look at look at the tundra. We're There's in the no tundra. There's no trees at all because no nothing trees. can survive the in this kind of climate. The ground is too frozen for root systems to get in. There's flowers. There's grasses. 
There's not much else. Wait, is that an Arctic fox? I think I saw an Arctic fox. So there's not much precipitation. It's not raining it's yet. Not, not raining yet, but it might. Wait, wait, wait. Did it, is it starting to snow? I think it is. I think it's starting to snow. Oh, that oh. makes it even colder. Oh. Oh, so we do I'm, get some precipitation so here right in the tundra, but not every single day. Not every single day. And when it does come, it usually comes as snow. Snow fight. Wow. All right. All right, that was amazing. All Let's right. get back to the classroom. Oh my gosh, I'm oh. so glad we're Ooh. back. I do oh, not so like cold the right. I'm so cold right now. There's such a low temperature. So low saying. in the barrier. And the snow. Like, I'm going to get this snow off me. What we're going to be looking at now, our next climate graph, is for the Boreal Forest. This is my favourite biome. It Boreal. It can be seen in the movie Twilight, if you think of Twilight and the forest. In the thing that I'm we cool. need to look at with this particular climate graph is the huge temperature range, um, as well as the precipitation. So do you want to tell me a bit about the temperature, Sizia? Yes, temperature. So we can see, again, we're in the Northern Hemisphere because this goes up in the middle in June, July. So at the side here, we've got a temperature over here. We get down to like negative 20 degrees Celsius. Freezing. Very, very, very cold. But in the summertime, we're actually up to 15, 16 degrees. Pretty nice. So pretty, not a bad, not a bad time if you go in June, July. But we see here, we basically have a temperature range of almost 40 degrees. That's an enormous temperature range, daily, daily maximum temperature for each month of December and month of July. Uh, July. Very, very different there. If we have a look at our precipitation down the bottom, you can see that most of our precipitation is falling during the summer. Um, and it's relatively low throughout the rest of the year. We get a moderate amount of rainfall in the summer. So not too distinct. Um, the main thing we want to look at when we see a boreal is this huge temperature range mm -hmm. from very, very cold up to quite a uh, relatively nice summer. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Very Let's good. go have a look at the boreal. All right. Boreal. Three, two. two. Whoa, Ooh. it's cold. It's cold. I didn't think it was going to be this cold. You didn't tell me we were coming in winter. We're in Russia, comrades. There's a massive temperature range Big and temperature we decided range. to come here right in the middle of winter. You can tell this because we do have some precipitation and it's fallen as snow. Rookie move. Rookie so move. all of these trees behind us so are covered in snow. i got my medium, medium coldness hat, so we're okay. <sighs> massive beanie, mm. no well, jumper. This forest looks like we're in a movie of some kind. Do you feel like you're in twilight? I feel like I'm in Twilight. Watch out, there's vampires. It's mm. deadlier than any animal. I don't know about vampires. I'm pretty sure I saw a bear over there, but I didn't see any vampires. Mm. Yeah. Look harder. It's lovely. There's snow on the trees. Yeah, Do you see why this is my favourite biome? It's a nice place. I, so I get a positive vibe from it. Mm. It is lovely. Bear, lots of forestry there. goes on in this biome for no yes. reason. Lots of Russian forests cutting down. Yes. Alright. Alright. Back, back to, to the classroom. classroom. Well, that was quite nice, wasn't it? Oh, we're back already. We're yeah. back. There was, there was a lot of trees around, That's some snow on the ground. Pretty, very pretty, bit of snow. Nice. Oh, wasn't, I can see where like Boreal Pollock. They are so very much. pretty. Canada, nice place to be. Alright, well what we're going to look at now is probably uh, one of the favourites, which is the savannah, home of the Lion King. Made famous by the Lion King. And we've got two very distinct features here, one the with the temperature, the one with the precipitation. So we'll start with the precipitation first, because we can see we've got two things going on here. Sizio, what's happening? in these two sections. Well, we've got a really weird, weird rainfall pattern. We've actually got two wet seasons and two dry seasons. So we've got pretty massive fluctuation in, in precipitation. Here in uh, 03 and 04, so March, April, May, we've got really big spike in rainfall up to almost you know, 190 millimeters, and then it dries off again. And by getting towards November, we're back up to like a slightly smaller wet season, but compared to the month just previous, very wet season. So if we want to think of this in terms of a Lion King, at this point here, Scar's got Pride Rock, everything's drying out. And then here, eventually we've come into our wet season and Simba has returned. The King has returned. To take his rightful place. Yeah, and throw Scar off a giant rock. The next thing we need to look at when we look at the savannah is that there's a lot of hyenas. Unlike the boreal forest, we don't have a huge temperature range. So temperature for this particular climate graph is over this side here. Um, and as you can see, it, the highest it gets is maybe 21. The lowest it gets is 18. So it's only three degrees difference throughout the entire year. So very, very consistent temperature mm -hmm. range. Yeah. Pretty excited for this one. Yeah, you get like a lot of grasslands and trees every every now and then, but. What we're going to watch out for is like rhinos and lions and stuff like that. Maybe a giraffe. We could see a giraffe. That'd be so great. Oh, let's go see. Oh, let's have a look for a giraffe. Three, two, one. Whoa! 
Oh wow! Incredible! It's the savannah, you guys. It's like being a lion king. Oh, it is. Look, there's a lion over there. Zebra. I hope the lion doesn't get the zebra. It's definitely gonna eat the zebra, or at least a cheetah will. So the climate here has made Maybe this particular insulin. environment the way it is. So we can see lots of long grass. A lot of grassland, high grasses, very little in the way of trees and stuff. You can see a tree over there and over there. Yeah. But they're very sparse. They're not, not a lot of trees. Uh, lions aren't the king of the jungle. No. Lions don't live in the jungle. Lions are the king of the savannah. And you can see at the moment that it's very dry. So we're in the dry season. There's two dry seasons every year. Man, I need a drink. And two wet seasons. Luckily, we decided to teleport here during the dry oh, season. Lucky, Refresh it. Lucky I brought some, let's say, water. <laughs> Back to the classroom. Whoa. Whoa, that was scary. One. See that lion? Uh, it was huge. It, was it gonna die. killed you. I went to pat the lion because the Lion King makes the lions look so friendly and tame and it didn't like it. It they basically got really angry and tried to eat me. Don't pat lions. Bad idea. Number one lesson from our video this week. All right, we're somewhere a little bit different now. Um, we're coming over to the Amazon, which is a rainforest. Mm -hmm. And this is a very typical climate graph for a rainforest. And we're going to see two main things in particular. Well, we're going to see we've got a very flat temperature range, mm -hmm. almost no temperature range at all. And not only that, but the temperature is quite high. Um, generally about 30 degrees pretty much the whole year round. And we have a slight difference between wet and dry season, but not much. And you can see even the dry season is still very, very rainy. So very high rainfall, very consistent temperatures, as well as a wet and dry season. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is going to be very exciting. I've always wanted to see the Amazon rainforest. You know that song, In the Jungle and the Lion King? Yes. Technically that's misplaced because they're yes. in the savannah the whole time. Yeah. Stupid. We've already been to the savannah. Stupid. So let's actually go to the jungle, the, jungle, the mighty jungle. Three, two, one. Rainforest. It's so humid. Now we're in the jungle. Man, yes. I'm so sweaty. This it's is like incredible. In uh, 117% humidity right now. Is it? It's all right. It was just a vine. Okay, lucky, lucky. The biodiversity here is two, huge. It's a two can. It's a two can. So many different animals, so many different plants. So many We've different got our... insects because mosquitoes, bugs everywhere, especially in South America when you know, which when, is where we are, when the, obviously. Which is obviously like, oh, like, that's Brazil. Obviously it's Brazil. We went to a part that's not on fire. Yeah, yeah, it's small, this bit that's left. But there's so many mosquitoes, so many bugs, more insects in South America than like all the other continents combined. So if you're ever in South America, like we are right now, mosquito net might be, might be a good really thing. You don't to be in things like malaria. want to get malaria. It's going to no, be a bad really time. And again, you need to bring fluids with you because it's, you just you sweat so much, you just lose a lot of fluids. So, mm. It's very man, warm here. If we come any month, it would be very warm because it's a very consistent temperature. Even in the drier season, it's still going to rain a lot. So yeah. most afternoons, you're going to get a lot of rain. Um, yeah, that's why the Amazon River is the biggest, not the longest, but the biggest river. All right, we've got one more biome to go. Should we get back to the classroom? One more time, let's do it. So much to see in the rainforest. Did you see that jaguar? And there's a toucan. Yeah, so many animals. I'd say maybe the most biodiverse of yeah. all of our biomes. And also a lot of fires. Rest in peace. All right, now we're at another rainforest with a similar another biome. climate. Another biome with a similar climate. What did I say? Rainforest. Oh, biome. What another biome with a similar climate? Well, this is like almost, you could say it's almost an underwater rainforest because the biodiversity is so high. It is so high. Saved it. So what we're going to see here is, again, our temperature range is pretty consistent. It goes from about 25 up to 30, so not a huge amount of range throughout the year. And so, if we look at our precipitation... So precipitation, you can see, very pronounced wet season in the Aussie summer. This is Cairns, by the way, very reef. And then a quite dry, dry season. We've got a rainfall up here of three or four hundred millimeters a year so there's a lot of rain but down here we're basically almost at zero so it doesn't rain at all if you were to go in let's say july mm, who did that <laughs> um then you can see we're still going to have average temperatures of like 26 or 27 and not, not very much rainfall it's gonna be a real good time on the barrier perfect reefs conditions. in like the july school holidays yeah perfect mm. conditions if you do manage if to go just, up there if, if you, you happen choose to choose geography, geography and, and, and you want to go school, to see the great barrier reef. see some coral and fish in very mm. warm, lovely yeah. waters. What? Imagine, imagine being on the reef right now, like snorkeling around. I don't know if we can go underwater. that far. Does a green screen let us go underwater? Let's see what we can do. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Look at the parrotfish. Mm. What? 
Mm. What? Take it out. Look at the coat. It's gone. You missed it. Missed it. Oh, a turtle! Oh my gosh, it's a sea turtle! It's pretty, wet. and there's a bell underwater too, did you hear that? I know, that's, that's amazing. So we're here at the Great Barrier Reef, the biggest coral reef in the entire world. And if you ask our students who came with us last year, they'll tell you that it's always pretty warm, even in the middle of winter when we went snorkeling. Still like 25 degrees, even at the bottom of the climate graph. Just like the rainforest, it's very biodiversity. You can see that by all the coral around it's us. It's pretty much the most biodiverse yeah. region of all of Australia. It's absolutely Land incredible. and water, amazing. So these pieces of coral, fish everywhere. It's crazy. We get tropical rain in this area too, and that can have some impact on the reef through freshwater ponding. Lovely, lovely place to be. If you choose senior geography, maybe you'll be here one day. Let's go for a swim. Okay. Wait. <laughs> wow, what a world trip that was. That was I know, like, there's so many climates out there. I feel like I've traveled so much in so little time. Thanks so much for traveling with me today, Cezia. Yeah? That, that's okay, that's fine. It's, it's good. I just took a lot of time mate, on we, planes, getting to all these places. Yeah, we went like around the world. The entire world. Mm, See great. us next week guys. Uh, we're going to have a, another video up for skills. Uh, make sure if you've got your prelim exams coming up, you're studying hard. Yes, it's the exam time around the state for a lot of people. So get stuck into that study. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at geography underscore explained underscore online. Hit like, hit subscribe and we'll see you all next week. See you later GS squad. a little bit more friendly now. Um, although, lots of opportunity to still, I guess, die. Um, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just put my constant fear of death into the video. There's a lot of opportunity to, I don't know, I guess, die. <laughs> so if you feel like that, go to the Amazon rainforest. There's a lot of opportunities for death. Criticize Duterte. <laughs> <laughs> Not Duterte, what's the guy's name? Boss Naro. That's that's amazing.